Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. It is Tuesday, May 23rd. We are now eight days away from the final date to register any of our firearms if we want to remain in compliance with ATF's new rule about firearms with attached stabilizing braces. And I get the impression, I get the impression because I do get the pleasure of talking to a lot of you from all around the country that many many, many of you, a large majority of you, are not going to comply with this rule. Why do I think that? Well, we're going to do a little bit of number crunching today, and I'm going to show you that I think this may go the same way as the bump stock ban, which will compare those numbers as well. So today, let's spend a few minutes and let's talk about what does mass non-compliance with ATF's pistol brace rule really look like? Okay, so the issue we're talking about yet again today is ATF's new rule as it relates to firearms with attached stabilizing braces and the impending deadline coming up on May 31st and barring some kind of cataclysmic event with the courts or Congress, we are all gonna be stuck with this thing come May 31st. I know a lot of you have waited till the last minute and now you're trying to figure out what the heck am I gonna do? I do know, however, that many, many of you, because you've been more than willing to express this to me, you have no intention of complying whatsoever. And it's not just our viewers that are saying that. I actually think that there is a huge segment of potentially affected individuals who are not complying with this rule or have no intention of doing so. Now, the title of this is, what does mass non-compliance with ATF's pistol brace rule really look like? This is not gonna be me advocating for mass non-compliance. This is not gonna be me telling all of you to get immediately into the Form 1 hopper and get your firearms registered. We've done a very thorough job, I believe, here at Washington Gun Law in not telling you how to think, but giving you all the stuff to think about. What I'm gonna do today, however, is I'm not gonna talk about what does mass non-compliance look like from a law enforcement standpoint. We're not gonna get into speculation on that, ATF kicking down doors and all of that. If we get to that point, maybe we can have that conversation, but that is a long, long way down the road. What I do wanna talk to you about is the pretty obvious numbers that bear out that, you know what? I don't think a lot of people are gonna be complying with this rule. What am I talking about? Well. For those of you who geek out on this channel all the time, you know that we did this video right here on May 5th. And the whole purpose of that video is, is hey, listen, I'm at 30 days. I haven't seen any movement on an injunction or defunding of this from Congress or anything like that. The clock is still ticking. I have a firearm that I'm gonna put into the Amnesty Form 1 hopper, and I did so. Now, at that time, when the video was shot, which was on May 5th, the good folks at the gun club that had assisted me, Security Gun Club in Woodenville, Washington, had had conversations with representatives of the ATF and recently received some data as to how many firearms had been registered. So, with that in mind, let me share with you the numbers and the extrapolation that I've done to show you that I don't believe that there are a lot of people who are gonna be complying with this rule. We start off with this, the ATF estimated that there was anywhere between three and 40 million of these firearms. Now, I recognize that that is an incredibly wide range. So for the sake of this discussion, I'm gonna give a conservative estimate, and I'm gonna say that there is only 20 million of these firearms in the United States. Now, you and I probably both know that there's a lot more than that, but for the sake of this hypothetical, we're gonna say that there are 20 million firearms with attached stabilizing braces. Now. For the sake of this hypothetical, I am also going to say that at least 25% of those 20 million firearms have now been reconfigured. That is, either the pistol brace has been removed permanently, such that it cannot be reattached, or the upper receiver has been changed out, or we can even throw into this the firearm has in fact been completely destroyed. That would leave us at 15 million firearms that still need to be registered. Okay, now, as of May 5th, approximately two weeks ago, there was only 125,000 of these firearms that had been registered with the ATF. That is less than 10% of the eligible number of firearms using our rather conservative estimates here. Now, let's just say in arguendo for the sake of this hypothetical that since May 5th, 
and today's video, which is May 22nd, the number of registered firearms has actually doubled. No, actually, let's even do it this way. Let's say that the number of registered firearms has actually tripled. That means that there would be 375,000 firearms that are currently registered out of 15 million firearms that are eligible and fall under the purview of this rule. Well, that means there's still 14.625 million firearms still to be registered with the federal government with just a little over one week. Now, I said also, let's take a look at the bump stock ban. Now, although the bump stock ban has been subject to a lot of litigation, primarily out of the Fifth Circuit, it probably looks like that was a completely unconstitutional act by the ATF, sound familiar? We know that there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these bump stocks sold and only a few thousand that were ever surrendered to the ATF. Assuming that there was three times as many that were destroyed by the owners, there was roughly somewhere between five and seven percent of all sold bump stocks that were ever accounted for as being either surrendered or destroyed. The bottom line was is that there was a less than 10% compliance rate and I have talked to many individuals around the country who still possess bump stocks waiting for that rule to be reversed. So the bottom line is, is what does mass non-compliance with ATF's pistol brace rule look like? Well, it looks like perhaps as many as over 14 million firearms that will not be registered which probably means you're looking at somewhere between 10 and 14 million firearms that the ATF wants to make a felon overnight. Let us also remember that that is us using the, the beginning estimate number of 20 million of these guns being in existence at the time the rule was published. If we have underestimated that number, and it is there a high likelihood that we did, yeah, but we used the conservative number, then the number of firearms that will not be in compliance with this rule and the number of firearm owners who will not be in compliance with this rule will be in the millions and millions. We will obviously keep you posted about what's happening with this rule. This is an ever fluid situation this week. We kind of told you this was gonna be pistol brace week. And as we learn more and more, we will make sure that we keep you posted. Listen, if you have any other questions about the pistol brace rule or anything else related to what's left of our second amendment rights, Y'all should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now, but if you don't, that information is down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.